Welcome back to another tutorial. This is part two of SketchUp for Woodworkers. In part one, we built this bench. If you haven't seen that, you can check that out. I'll put that in the description. But in this one, we're gonna take this project, this uh, bench that we built, and we're going to export it into SketchUp Pro. And I'm gonna show you how to create printable plans with dimensions included uh, from your SketchUp projects. So, um, this is in the free version right now. Uh, if you watch the first one, you know that we built this bench in the free web version of SketchUp. This time we're going to save a SketchUp file. We're gonna save a copy of this SketchUp file and we're gonna take that into the pro version. So what I want to do is go back to my home page, and this is where you can find all the projects you've worked on. And what I'm going to do is click on the three dots here and select download a copy. So now I'm going to download this uh, SketchUp file to my computer. And then if I go to my computer and open that up, um, it should open in the pro version of SketchUp, which I have downloaded to my computer. So as I mentioned in the first video, the reason you would want to use the pro version of SketchUp, or at least my favorite feature of the pro version, is that you can create printable PDF versions of your projects. What we need to do now that we are in the pro version of SketchUp, we're going to create what's called a scene. So you can think of a scene as a snapshot or screenshot of your project. And this will be what you see when you take it into layout. Layout is where we're going to add dimensions and basically create the PDF plans of our project. So the first thing I want to do before I take a scene here is delete the red, green, and blue axis. We don't want that on our page, on our plans. So we're gonna go to view and right here, axis, we're gonna click on that. And so now those are gone. The next thing we want to do is create a uh, totally white background so that we can take this image and basically add it to a piece of paper and we don't have this gray background here. So what we're going to do is go to uh, Window and Styles, and then here we will select a style. I'm going to select one that is a white background but still includes the color on the object, like this. That style by default has the red, green, and blue axis, so we just need to go over here to View and delete that one more time. And so now we have our project in a blank white canvas and we're gonna make a scene of it. You can use the orbit tool, which is right here, or O is the shortcut on your keyboard, to grab the orbit tool and sort of move your project around. Um, and before we take any uh, scenes, I wanted to point out that there is a way to orient the project perfectly by hitting Command-1, that will give you the top-down view, Command-2 is the bottom, Command-3 is the side, Command four is the other side. You didn't notice a difference because it is the same. Command five is this side. And so we're gonna start with command three. If you're on Windows, it's gonna be control one, control two, control three, and so on and so forth. I'm on a Mac, so I'm using command. So now let's create a scene or a snapshot of this project. We're gonna to go to window here, go to scenes, and then now we can hit this plus sign when we're ready. Now you can zoom in a little bit on your project before you uh, take a scene. Just make sure you've got a good view of the project because when you hit this plus sign, go ahead and hit create scene and it is going to basically take a snapshot. So we could go back over to our project here and hit command five and uh, get this side view here, add another scene just like that and basically you can take any scene you want. Now you can also come over here, click on a component of your project, hit M for the move tool, and you can take the project and let's see, sort of separate all the pieces. You could bring them out individually and get a shot of say just one piece. You could move these out of the way and you could create scenes of just the components or the entire project. I'm just gonna leave what we have for now just to show you how to use this program. And you can get inside here and play around uh, once you have a project. So now that we've got our scenes, we can export these scenes to layout, but first it's going to require that we save the project. So if I click right here on the layout icon, it will tell me please save the project first. So I'm going to hit file, save, 
and now we can go to layout. So we're going to click this icon here. This is send to layout. And now uh, it's going to ask to choose a template. I'm just going to choose a landscape template. I'll go with A3 paper. The last scene that you took will always be what you'll see here. If you want to change it, click on the image, right click or control click, go to scenes, and I'm going to choose scene one here. So that was the first one. So it's always going to import the last scene that you took, but again, you can change it just like that. And so if you wanted to adjust the size of the um, project here, hold shift and pull on the corners here. You may not even need to hold shift, but typically when adjusting images, holding shift allows the proportions to stay the same. Um, and so now we've got this where we want it. Let's add some dimensions to this. So we're going to use the dimension tool. You can hit D on your keyboard or just click right here on this little symbol that has a three and two red dots. By default, it may be set to meters even though you built your project in inches. So let's find out. We're gonna click on this corner here, click on this corner here and pull it up. So notice it says 1.22 meters. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead, click the dimension tool again it has to be selected in order to change these settings. So we have the dimension tool selected. We're gonna to go to window and dimension style. And so under length right here, click on length and go to architectural. And so now it is by default set to inches. I usually set the precision to 1 16th of an inch, even though in this project, everything is um, set to whole inches or half inches but I always go to 1 16th because that's what I have on my tape measure. So now we've got architectural 1 16th of an inch. So now when we use the dimension tool again, again, I'll click here, click here, it says four feet. Basically you uh, move the dimension away from the project and then click again to set it where you want it. Now notice that the four feet right here is super small. So one uh, thing we should do is make that more visible make the text a little bit bigger. So I'm going to take the select tool, which you can find here, or just hit spacebar on your keyboard, click on the number, and then now we can go over here to text and make it bigger or smaller. Now notice there's a shortcut. For me, it is command plus sign. If you're on Windows, it will be control plus. So what I'm going to do is hold command, and I'm gonna hit the plus sign 10 times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. And so now it is much more visible. Let's go ahead and do that again. Let's hit D for the dimension tool. We're going to take the dimensions of the leg here. So I clicked on one corner, clicked on another, and then pull it away from the project. I'm gonna hit space bar for the select tool or just grab it right here. Click on the number, hold command or control if you're on Windows and hit the plus sign a whole bunch of times. Now I usually hit it the exact amount of times for every dimension, just so that they're all the same size. But basically we're just doing that so that we can see the, uh, the numbers a little better. And so that is the basics here. So you can make a page like this for every scene that you created. You could make pages for individual components or the entire project like we've got here. But once you have the dimensions on there and you're ready to create a PDF, you're going to go to File, Export, and then right here, format PDF, and it's that simple. And so you should be able to print that document. Uh, be aware if you, if you have color on your project, um, you'll use a lot of ink that way. Uh, one thing you could do inside a SketchUp here is instead of having the color, when we went to window and then styles to make the white background, you could click on a style like this and that will give you just the project lines. So you've got a uh, basically a white project, black lines. And again, if you wanted to remove the red, green, and blue axis, you'd go to view, axis, just like that. And so that might be a more printer friendly version as far as conserving ink, but that is how you create plans with dimensions out of a SketchUp project. So that's all for this video. Uh, thank you for watching part two of the SketchUp for Woodworkers series. I'll see you in the next video.